every minute, man. I'm stoner, I'm stoner, I'm stoner. I'm stoner, I'm stoner, I'm stoner. I'm stoner, I'm stoner, I'm stoner. I'm motherfucker stoner. I just put a 40 on my wrist like a bus. I just. A man who goes by the nickname Lil Woody might be one of the most entertaining witnesses we've seen so far in the Rico trial against rapper Young Thug out in Atlanta. And that's saying something. We have some of the top moments from Kenneth Copeland's testimony over the last few days. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Shout out to Law and Crime, Sidebar. Hey everybody, everybody this like is another Law and Crime dude. legal alert. Have you experienced severe gastroparesis or other side effects after Ooh. taking Ozempic or another GLP-1 weight loss medication? Ozempic, the Ozempic lawsuit alleged that the drug can lead to severe BLP. intestinal blockage and persistent yeah. vomiting and that manufacturers allegedly failed to provide adequate warnings about these risks. Well, well, True Law, one of our legal sponsors, is helping those injured file a claim through an experienced attorney who helps ensure your claim is thoroughly presented. Visit sidebar to answer less than 10 questions and check your eligibility to file a claim. Since the state's star witness, Kenneth right, Copeland, took the stand in the it. trial of rapper Jeffrey Williams, also known as Young Thug, and his co-defendants, there has really been Dugger. nothing short of absolute drama. But honestly, what do you expect in this case with all of its twists and turns? I'm talking, of course, about the case where Atlanta prosecutors allege that Williams Money is one of the founders of no YSL and Young Slime Life, which they claim is a criminal street gang that has been terrorizing the city. It's part of a wide sweeping racketeering or recall. It feels good to see that spout, you young castle man. Are charged with numerous Rise up, the defense says that this is just a record label and there's nothing more nefarious that's going on. Now this trial has been a little bit of a circus because for one thing, it has been going on for what, almost a year and a half? And by the way, almost a year of that Damn. was jury selection alone. Well now, Damn. one of the witnesses that we had been anticipating and that we were looking forward to hearing from was Kenneth Copeland. He had been mentioned many times in prior testimony and was seen speaking with police in an interrogation tape that leaked online. He was supposed to be a star witness for the prosecution because he had okay, so to the star Woody. that Williams no was committed to criminal activity. But if prosecutors thought they were going to have pretty solid evidence in the form of Copeland's testimony, or it was going to be smooth sailing. Damn niggers were wrong. Why do I say ah! that? Well, Copeland, who also goes by the nickname Woody or Lil Woody, was very mm -hmm. uncooperative from the beginning. Before he was on the stand on Friday, June 7th, his attorney announced to the court that he didn't want to be there and he didn't want to testify. So, Your Honor, Mr. Copeland is here. I can state as his attorney that he intends to exercise his Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. He does not wish to testify in this trial. And I would ask, there is no other, he's not on bond, he's not on probation, there's nothing like that. I would ask that he be allowed to leave this courtroom um, without being compelled to testify. Okay, now the prosecution had given Copeland what's called use immunity. And that means that whatever he would say on the stand during this trial couldn't be used against him legally. Well, at least by the state. It seems there's some concern, maybe on Copeland's part, about whether he could end up with federal charges. 
But anyway, putting that to the side, when you're granted use immunity and the court compels you to testify, you really can't uh -huh. plead the fifth anymore because your right against self-incrimination is essentially protected. What's your pleasure? Damn. Yeah. I said, what's your pleasure, sir? Um, you do you the fifth wish home. to give testimony? I know you don't want to give testimony in this case, but you've been given immunity in this particular circumstance, um, use immunity. So um, are you going to testify? Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Copeland, good afternoon. Do you want to be here? Ma'am? Do you want to be here? I'm here. Okay. Wait, are you gonna let me ask? I'm just in time. I'm okay. in time. How old are you? Grown. Okay. What does grown mean? I'm an adult. Fifth. Mr. Copeland, yeah, given the fact that you have invoked no. your Fifth Amendment privilege, but the state has already given you immunity under 24-5-507, this court holds you in willful contempt, and uh, we'll see you on Monday, and we'll see we'll see if we uh, can get some more testimony at that point in time. Take him into custody. Yep. <laughs> Copeland was held in contempt of court. They are that the the also the weekend. He was back on no, that Monday, me. and this time he at least answered questions, but getting the answers that the prosecution wanted was a little more difficult. I mean, even He's a basic witness, questions like, you don't how know old are you, or where did you go to school, this nigga proved to be complicated. So and bad. when you were younger, did you go to school? Yes. Where did you attend school? I don't know. I went, I went to a lot of different schools. Okay, where are all the schools you went to? I don't recall all of them. Oh, just tell me something. Hey, good elementary. Westside elementary. Elementary school or middle school? Elementary. Why you don't remember the middle school you went to? Did you go to middle school? Hell, don't try me, John. I did. How long did you go to? Did you finish middle school? Damn. Oh, rules. Yeah, you trying to call my nigga yeah, slow. Okay. Did you go to middle school? Yeah. yeah. All right. By the way, let me give you some context. That nigga had According to the prosecution back in 2015. He had to think that that's going to incriminate him down the line. Involved in the murder of Donovan Thomas, also known as Big Nut, an okay. alleged rival. But the nut! Shannon Stilwell and Diamante Kendrick, two of Williams' co-defendants in this trial, they have been charged in connection with the shooting, okay, and Williams dangerous. himself is accused of renting the car that you was used. like he got around my mind. The prosecution, they needed Copeland to confirm that he knew these men, but even that was like pulling teeth. She's Damn! Like, Look at those Little Woody! They got me bitch Woody! Damn ass! Don't care! Oh. 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 Yeah, that nigga was a bitch Woody. Oh. Yeah, that Please look at those pictures. Do I have to look at them? Yes. <laughs> this nigga is literally here so he don't get fun. No cap. I love it, nigga. Stand up in there. Start first. This nigga's facial reactions is killing a nigga. Tell me if you recognize individual Stacey Exhibit 350 Yankee. I recognize myself. Okay, do you recognize anybody else in 350 Yankee? Myself. Do you myself? recognize anyone else in 350 Yankee? Say faces covered up. Okay, do you see someone's face who's not covered up in 350 Yankee? Myself? Yeah. Okay. Do you recognize who that person is? I can hardly tell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that Shannon Jackson? Your Honor, at this point in time, I'm turning to impeachment. Do you know someone by the name of the Mickey on Garlington? Discreet name. Little D. For sure. How do you know Little D? I didn't have birth. 
sorry, say that again. I almost burnt him. That's my son. <laughs> yeah. Tell the jury what do you mean by that? They mean he my son. <laughs> okay. And this nigga look like you do not want to cut this bitch out. So bad. What you mean? Do you know someone who's called Little D from Cleveland? Oh. Cleveland? Heard you heard of him. Okay. We'll talk about him. You said what now? Tell me who you recognize in 380 Yankee. Oh. Me and Coco. Who's Coco? The ugly boy right here. Okay. <laughs> And the prosecution also needed to connect Copeland with Williams himself. So they tried to get Copeland to give evidence of their friendship, but Copeland appeared hesitant. My question is, when he was not in the studio and you hung out with him... How many days have they had this nigga here, bro? Uh, sweet His outfit keep like, changing. Go to, like, uh, bowling alleys and stuff like that. Uh, he went to the kids' football game, I remember. Uh, what the hell he did? I've been to the club with them. Uh, I've been on shows, I meant. You can correct that. You said on shows? Yeah, like when I watch him perform. All right. Now, Mr. Copeland and his testimony, or lack thereof, it had a bit of a ripple effect. Why do I say that? I say that because according to Williams' lead defense attorney, Brian Steele, he was told that the judge, the prosecution team, Copeland, and a stand-in attorney for Copeland were all part of an ex parte meeting. This nigga looks so innocent at the same time, One on one with the judge. The defense is not present. Like a little bill-ass nigga. Highly oh, improper to have a private meeting with a sworn witness when they had no idea this was going on, especially when some of what Copeland allegedly said, namely that he would confess to being responsible for the murder of Thomas, or that the judge and prosecutor allegedly pressured him in that meeting to testify or face jail time. The defense said that that information we should have been privy to. Now, Judge Earl Glanville only wanted to know one thing from Brian Steele. How did you find out about this? How did you find out about this meeting? Steele wouldn't give up his information. He wouldn't give up his source. He cited privilege that doing so would violate the Georgia bar rules. Mm -hmm. And so an angry Judge Glanville held him in contempt of court. He originally was supposed to report to jail this weekend to begin a 20-day stint over the next 10 weekends, but he was granted a reprieve by the Georgia Supreme Court and won't have to go at least well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually did a whole sidebar episode on this with some really great insight from Ben Chu, the lawyer. I wish this damn nigga would stop talking. Just put a little D on the damn shit. Little Dicky, whatever the goddamn name is. Caleb Bumpus was the stand-in counsel for Copeland's regular attorney who had gone out of town. Caleb Bumpus was the stand-in counsel for Copeland's regular attorney who had gone out of town. And the allegation has surfaced, and based on Judge Glanville's statements in court, he seems to suggest that she may have been the one who told Brian Steele about this ex parte meeting. Now, she and Copeland will have to appear at a show cause hearing in a couple of weeks to determine if they should be held in contempt of court. Well, after all of this chaos surrounding the ex parte meeting, Copeland decided he didn't want Miss Bumpus to represent him anymore. Damn! Sir, um, he Mr. fired Copeland, his lawyer? Um, is it your desire to release your counsel at this point in time? She fat. Oh! She's fired. Okay. But according to Miss Bumpus, she had already been fired before Copeland even testified. As you can see, this trial has been one so That nigga said she fat! So now let's go back Do to the Copeland's actual testimony. Assistant hey, District Attorney you Simone Copeland asked him to elaborate on the information miles. he had no given cat. to investigators during he the interrogation in the fire. Nobody in his life. At the time, Copeland, a convicted felon, had been found with a gun during a traffic stop, and he was facing a 10-year sentence, but instead told the detectives about past crimes and crimes that he said were going to happen. The video, as I mentioned, was leaked online, and in it, Copeland also talks about Jeffrey Lamar Williams and how he would be willing Jeffrey. to help get a confession from him. But a frustrated Copeland told Hilton he just told the investigators what they wanted to hear. Did you tell myself 
and my colleagues and stuff. I wonder who can reach this to my boy's hair. And Shannon. How my nigga stay so fresh? Yesterday. Did you tell myself? My nigga got the fresh line up and shit. Free twist. Face tattoos pop and shit. Probably got a nail pedicure. The murder of the Thomas. I told you and them. Um, they, what you told them? What I told investigators. Mm-hmm. In June, uh, when when Nut got killed. When Big Who? Lil Nut or Big Nut? Or Bust that Nut? And it's my way out of a situation. So, so I said, I picked up D and Shannon. D never told me nothing. I made it up to come clear myself up. And that's it. <laughs> Was that? That's it. That you said that. Did you tell us that yesterday? What you just said? You asked me to be truthful. To be truthful. And I didn't. And I told you. Mm -hmm. What, what I told the investigator back then, back then wasn't me being truthful. So I'm telling you something mm -hmm. that I didn't tell them because Could I ain't trying to go back to jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I asked you what yesterday. The first time you said this part, that now what you're saying today is what is truth. What you're saying right now, what you're trying to tell the jury right now, is what you are now saying is truth. What I'm trying to tell you is <laughs> our conversation was about something that I said. That bitch look like a tall ass Christmas I tree. Sit your ass down somewhere. Hopefully, allow me to finish this. Okay, all right. Mr. Copeland, do you need to finish your answer? No, I need a break, Jan. <laughs> I need a break. If you're a Godfather Part 2 fan, by the way, it's very Frank Pantangelo. Damn, yeah, you don't put your ass up. Do this? My good Corleone did that. I don't play with sure. our reaction with y'all niggas, so. Any, by, by the way, if you're I did movie, not I know this nigga was really talking. I encourage everybody to tell me otherwise. But anyway, so Copeland, let's go back to him. He says he doesn't remember much of what happened in that interrogation. Do you recall what Thug said in 2015 to Kel? Yes. Yes, you remember what Thug said? I don't recall what was said. I don't remember what was said. Okay. I don't remember me talking to the investigators about it. All right. Do you remember telling Detective Gaither that when Kel got on the phone, that Thug said the beef ain't over with until you pay for my window? You shot my window. Yes. Yes, you remember telling Detective Gaither that? I don't remember what I don't told the police. At least he be a Let me ask you this. Are you just saying yes now to speed up your question? No, yes. yes. <laughs> Are you saying yes, that's what you told Detective Gaither? <clears throat> I know I I know I ain't complete school, but I I think I'm speaking proper English. <laughs> Nigga, no, you're not. I don't Nigga, you know. I said to no police, you keep sitting right here asking me the same question over and over and over and over and over. I'm tired of it. I'm drained. When I say yes, you ask me the same question over and over and over and over and over. But you, did you just tell the court and this jury that you're saying yes just to move the process? Yes, I think I said it loud and clear. So again, will you just answer the question that we can move the process along? Yes, yes. You keep asking. Okay, yes. And while his answers were not quite what Prosecutor Hilton seemed to be looking for, from a viewer perspective... I know, so get the fuck off the screen, speak with you about his relationship with me. No. Did you ever observe Thug mm -hmm. and Nut together? I never saw those two together. I never been around 
those two together are no. That nigga is lying like a motherfucker, boy. So how were you able to tell Detective Gaither that Nut and Thug was cool? Because they're questioning me, and I'm trying to get them off of me, and she asked me questions about Nut and Thug, I guess, and I'm telling her whatever she... She asked me, let's say she asked me a question about this guy. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, I seen this guy. It's blue. Whatever she asked me, I'm going to say, I'm going to agree to that. I'm going to say whatever she asked me. If she asked me about th th this reporter right here, I'm going to say, yep, she's sitting outside me with white tennis shoes on. I'm going to say something. Just because I want her to believe I'm telling the truth, uh, that I, I want her to, to get me out of jail. Damn. Damn. She has on white tennis shoes, don't she? Don't you got on white tennis shoes? She got on chucks. Right, and they white, right? Bitch, why does it matter? <laughs> she got on chucks. So you telling the truth? What color your shoes is? White. She said I'm a white woman. Right, so you're telling the truth then? Well, it, it depends. So yes, Mr. Copeland is certainly one of the more entertaining characters that we've encountered during the course of this incredible trial. Look at that smell. Much, much, much longer. Just as I said, jury selection alone took almost a year. You're like they got the right dummy up there. Its list of no cap. I haven't even gotten to the defense's case for the six defendants. But before we go, how about to leave your ass? Another few quips. No cap, bro. Brooklyn you got one more time. This week on the stand. I can't recall 2014. I've been in jail so much. So once you heard the pop, 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 do you remember what happened next? Yeah, I turned the radio down to see was I tripping. Okay. And once you turned the radio down to see if you were tripping, what what do you remember happening next? Uh, bullies hit my car. I don't remember no. I don't remember no. <laughs> no. I don't. No. Know, I don't. No. Know, I, don't, no. I, don't I don't know. So you're saying you don't remember? And All after right, on Thursday, Mr. Copeland allegedly posted this on Instagram. Job, I'd seen on your application. You said you never went to jail. Me, correct. I never went to jail. I was taken. Copeland. It's going to be back in the hot seat once again on Friday. And of course, we will have a lot of the cross examination. So we'll be seeing more of Lil Woody in the days to come. That's all, all we have for right now. Damn. That nigga had one more time to start talking. I was about to damn bleed his ass, boy. But hey, Lil Woody, you're fucking hilarious. No cap. You're made for TV. They might goddamn get you a little podcast deal or something after this bitch, no cap. But hey, I love y'all niggas. I hope y'all love me. I'm gonna be back. Bitch, my for y'all niggas. Hey, my stomach hurt. I gotta go. Ooh, peace.